think I see a bedfish. I think that is a bedfish. Just knows that I'm here now. Oh man. Scared it off, didn't I? Yep. That's a nice bedfish, y'all. Perfect. This fish might be a little stingy, but she's staying. Let it sink right in your face. Come on. Oh gosh. Oh, she had it. She had it. Got her. There we go. Yes. Yes. Oh my goodness. That's a nice one. That is a bigger fish than I thought it was. Holy cow. Holy cow. How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to TRF. Today's video, we're going to be talking about bed fishing. Oh, for giant Texas bass. Come on. Hello, baby. Hello, baby. Yes. Yes. Bring it in. Bring it in. Bring it in. No. 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 Don't you do that. Yes. Oh, man. Oh. 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 Well, folks, today we're going to be talking about my top five bed fishing lures of all time, no matter what bass species you are chasing. And we're going to teach you guys how to catch fish like this. Let's talk about it. Well, how's it going everybody and welcome back to TRF. My goal here on this channel is to help you guys become better bass anglers with every single video that I make. And so if you guys are not subscribed to the channel yet, hit that subscribe button. We are getting oh so close to 200 thousand subscribers which is crazy that we're building an instructional high quality channel that is getting to this size is definitely humbling and awesome so if you guys are not subscribed yet hit that subscribe button but today we are talking about the most wonderful time of the year and what do I mean by that well I mean it is bed fishing season I have said oftentimes here on my channel that a bass's life cycle really only revolves around three main things eating not being eaten and mating and the third one on that list is the one that we're going to be talking about in today's video and in probably quite a few videos to come here on the channel because it is my favorite time of the year to catch bass and honestly the best time of the year to go out there and catch numbers of bass and the biggest bass of your life. And I know that on my channel I probably say that last phrase quite a lot uh, but I really do mean it. In this time of the year the bass are usually the dumbest, they are the shallowest and so anybody can go out there cast around any sort of soft plastic lure and catch big bass. Inevitably there's going to be people watching this video that do not like the idea of catching bass as they are mating. And my answer to that is that if you fish anywhere in the country in your springtime, so here in Texas, that's from February through late April. If that's up north, your springtime is, is you know, May through, through late June, early July. If you fish in your springtime, wherever you live in the country, you are going to be catching fish that are spawning whether you know it or not. Because bass can make their beds in basically any water depth that the sun can reach, I'm talking anywhere from six inches to 20, 25 plus feet of water is, a, is how deep I've caught bedfish before. Uh, if you're fishing anywhere close to the bank in the springtime where you live, you're catching bedfish. So I don't quite give validity to the argument of don't bedfish, it's immoral. I just think it's an awesome way to catch fish. And as long as you are not taking those fish with you anywhere, putting them in your live well for too long, as long as you are releasing them back into the water where they belong, where they're doing their thing uh, in, in a timely manner, I don't think you're hurting the fishery at all. And the second thing about that is that there's tons of fish that spawn deeper than you're fishing and that spawn in dirtier water than you're fishing. And so the likelihood of you catching a bedding fish and that affecting your lake's population, it's just not there. I've been a lover of bed fishing for a long, long time. I feel like I'm pretty good at it and I feel like I'm good at teaching you guys how to catch bed fish uh, efficiently and quickly and of course getting those fish back down to their beds. And the top five lures that I'm gonna talk about, I'm not saying that you can't catch fish on anything besides these lures because I actually have caught bed fish on stuff that is not on this list. But I feel like this list, uh, not, in, in no particular order that I'm gonna talk about them, is the best five ways to catch all kinds of bed fish. Now, I'm gonna link a video below where I really went into kind of bed fishing 101, and I'll probably also link Nick the Informative Fisherman's video. I believe he did like an hour long video on bed fishing uh, and basically everything you need to know. It is a complicated topic and you can't just see a fish 
cast to it and catch it. There's a lot of nuances that come along with bed fishing, and I'm not gonna talk about those in today's video unless that nuance comes with a specific bait that I'm talking about. And so, sorry for all this setup. It's just bed fishing is a complicated topic, and I feel like I had to address all these things. So, without further ado, let's hop into my first lure on the list. My favorite lure of all time when it comes to fishing on beds, and that is the spot remover jig head with a white rage craw. This little doohickey right here, I, f I don't know why it's so good, but I feel like it kind of satisfies everything that a bass could want on a bed, or I guess not want on its bed. It has a lot of movement in the rage craw tails. It's got a flat head, and so the rage craw can actually stick up, and it doesn't imitate a crawfish. It doesn't even imitate a bluegill. It's white. It doesn't imitate anything. The whole goal of sight fishing or bed fishing is to irritate that fish into eating. When they're making their nest, when they're spawning, they are not hungry. They don't want to chase down a lure and eat it. You have to present it in front of their face, irritate them enough to get them to bite. And so I feel like the white rage craw on the spot remover jig head is just a really, really efficient way to get your bait down there because bed fishing is oftentimes a game of efficiency. You have to make a lot of flips and casts, bang, 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 bang that fish before they finally get irritated enough to eat it. This is heavy enough to get that lure down there to make a lot of quick, repetitive flips to that fish, but it also has enough action and enough, you know, I wouldn't say realistic, realisticness, whatever the term is, real, Realism? Realism, that's the one. Enough of whatever I was trying to say there uh, to get that fish to feel comfortable around it and eat it. Throwing a huge swim bait or a, a big soft plastic, like a big tube, a seven inch tube, oftentimes that's just too invasive and that fish will be like, all right, this looks nothing like what's gonna eat my babies. I'm not even gonna bother with this thing. And I feel like the size of this also leads to an incredible hookup ratio. I hardly ever lose fish on this thing on a bed and I think that's because they eat it, as you'll see from some of this footage here in a second, some underwater footage, they eat it from the back and that hook gets them in the roof of the mouth every single time. Like I said, I hardly ever lose fish on this thing and it's really caught the most bed fish for me over the past almost decade of my life. Lure number two on my list, like I mentioned in no particular order for bed fishing, is going to be a Texas rigged Senko. Now I don't think I touched on this in the beginning of this video, but I feel like I have to clarify. When I talk about bed fishing in this situation, I'm not talking about flipping around to white spots and, and beddy looking areas. I'm actually talking about looking at the fish. When you see a bass or two bass on a bed and you are actually you know, physically looking at them and you are flipping or casting to that area, that is what I'm talking about in today's video. The Cinco, while being an amazing lure to just cast around to spawn looking areas, white spots, you know, little holes in grass, things like that, it's also, for some odd reason, an amazing lure to flip and cast a bass to get them to bite on the bed. I'm almost always throwing the six inch striking ocho. I just think the six inch catches just as many fish and triggers a strike from a bigger fish than the five inch does. We'll talk about the five inch here in a second with the wacky Cinco, but the uh, the Texas Freak Cinco is just a really good all around uh, presentation for those bass on a bed. You can flip it in there and you can really slowly creep it along the bottom. You can kind of hop it faster and it really has a cool like I don't know, it's not like wobbling down as the, as the wacky rig wobbles like this, it kind of more like glides down, and for some odd reason those bass just cannot resist this thing. And just like every video here on the channel, all of my gear that I talk about will be linked in the video description. Uh, please purchase your tackle through those links, it tracks your purchase to my account, and helps me make a living. But now that we've talked about this, I say we move on to its cousin or its brother, whatever you want to call it, in the first finesse lure in my top five bed fishing lures list, and that is the Wacky Rig Senko. Now I think what makes a Wacky Rig perfect for a bed fishing situation is that it has a slower rate of fall. I'll include the video linked below where I actually caught a fish not using the drone, but with the drone right above the bed. And that fish wanted the lure presented a little bit slower, and it wanted it falling from the top of the water column all the way down and taking a while to get there. Any lure that fell right by its face and drug along the bottom was not quite finessey enough for whatever reason for that fish. Every single bed fish is different. That's one thing you guys have to understand, and I'm sure I talked about it, and Nick talked about it in the videos that I'll leave linked below. But the reason why you can't just throw one lure at every single bedfish is because they're all in a slightly different stage of the spawn. And of course, just like humans, 
bass are all a little bit different. And so one bass that likes the, the spot remover rage craw might not like the wacky rig. And one fish that might not like the wacky rig might like the spot remover rage craw. That's honestly the really cool thing about bed fishing is that every single fish is so unique and you have to approach each one with all of these lures tied on or ready to go. That way you can be switching your presentation after every few flips if the fish does not show interest in one thing, it might show interest in another. Uh, that's why I have a whole bunch of rods out in the springtime with all five of these plus a few more rigged up. Uh, but the, the wacky rig is just an amazing way to present the lure, the Cinco lure, like I said, the five inch is the one that I use, uh, in a way that's a little bit slower and a little bit more finessey. I usually use a, uh, a weedless wacky hook for my wacky rigs just because when you're bed fishing, you might be casting up around the side of a dock or next to a lay down, that kind of thing. And I don't want to get my lure stuck in and around the bed because then you have to actually go close to that bed fish. You'll spook him off. Oftentimes you'll spook him off for good, especially if you use your trolling motor in the area and kind of churns up the bottom. So anytime I can use a weedless that still gets a good hookup ratio, I'm going to use that one. And of course I'll have this hook linked in the video description as well. Moving on to lure number four on my list for bed fishing. And that is going to be the weightless fluke. Like I mentioned earlier, when you're bed fishing, you're not necessarily imitating any sort of forage that the fish is going to be eating because the fish is not usually eating. They are just eating or using their mouths to consume your lure out of aggression and defensiveness. But the one in my list here that I think does imitate something that fish could be worried about eating their eggs is going to be the soft plastic fluke. This here is a watermelon color, watermelon, I think watermelon red flake. My favorite color for the springtime is any kind of watermelon variation. And the reason why I think this is different and the rest of the lures on the list is because it looks at least somewhat like a bluegill. Now, I don't know how smart bass are. We're probably giving them a little bit too much credit, but I have found that when the fish are in an aggressive mood, the best thing to get those fish to bite quickly on a bed, especially when those fish have been chasing off bluegill, is a weightless soft plastic fluke. I have caught some of my biggest bed fish on this and as well, some of my smallest and hardest to catch bed fish. Sometimes you'll get a, a one to three pounder on a bed that just can't seem to get his mouth around any of the other lures that you have, but a weightless soft plastic four inch uh, fluke, this here is a KVD caffeine shad in watermelon red. I just found this thing can get in that fish's mouth and gets a very good hookup ratio, especially when other lures cannot get the job done. And last but not least, my lure number five on this list, and honestly, one of the most important ones to getting those very, very tricky bass to bite on a bed is going to be the drop shot. I know it can be scary to throw a super light line presentation to a big fish that you can see. You see that five, six, seven plus pounder and you think, I don't know if I wanna throw something that has light line, that's finessey. I'm gonna throw straight braid, I'm gonna throw a 20 pound fluorocarbon and really get a good hook set into that fish. Well, I can tell you guys, there's a lot of people out there in the springtime that are targeting the same fish that you are. And a lot of these lures, while they work well for me, they also work well for a lot of you guys too. And so the fish see a lot of these lures. Now, one thing that I do not think a lot of bed fish see is the drop shot, especially a medium to small size drop shot worm. Like I mentioned a few minutes ago, bed fishing is a repetitive activity. You have to get your lure in front of that fish's face or in that fish's area a number of times until that fish finally becomes aggressive enough to eat your lure. Now, the, the cool thing about the spot remover rage craw, that's a good catch, is that you can flip it in there, hit them on the tail, hit them on the head, and go over and over and over, and hopefully that fish will eventually eat it. But the problem is, with casting and retrieving so much, you are wasting a lot of time, especially on a fish that might want something a little bit more finessey, and something that stays in its face a lot longer. And that is where the drop shot comes in. Because of the drop shot weight on the bottom of the lake, and your lure up top, you can literally just sit there and shake your worm up and down. And that oftentimes can get that very tricky bed fish to bite. I have seen so many times when I'll use every single lure I can think of on a bed fish and they will just be totally closed mouth. They will not want anything to do with eating your lures. But as soon as you get that drop shot worm dangling in front of their face, literally, I've like hit them on the nose before, all of a sudden they'll go and they'll eat it. 
Nothing else could have got the job done. They need that repetition in their face and they also need something a little bit smaller to be able to easily inhale. And if you're losing fish on a bed on a drop shot, you are doing something wrong, especially on this drop shot setup right here, which I'll have the video linked below exactly how I rig and work this drop shot. So hopefully you guys learned something in today's video. Like I mentioned, we're gonna end today's video with a few fish catches from my underwater footage series, I believe last year, and I actually never even used this footage. So without further ado, we'll see you guys under the water and next time on TRF.